Muscles are essential for our life. You need skeletal muscle for your Sunday morning workout, you need your heart muscle to pump blood through your body and you need smooth muscle in your bowel for a food digestion. The smallest repeating functional unit is the sarcomere. This power pack performs the actual muscle work. When the sarcomere shortens, the muscle contracts. When the sarcomere lengthens, the muscle extends. We need to understand the sarcomere, the three-dimensional organization of the sarcomere at molecular level in order to understand how muscles work in health and disease. Scientists so far have been trying to look deeper into tissue, however they were limited by the instruments they could use. Nowadays we have cryo-electron microscopes and a new technique called focused ion beam scanning electron microscopy. Using this method we can now look deeper into tissue and understand muscles in three dimensions at molecular level. My name is Zhe Xin, people also call me Eric. I'm a PhD student in the group of Stefan Ronzer. The biological material for our analysis comes from our collaboration partner, the group of P Professor Matthias Gauto at King's College London. They isolate myofibrils, the basic rod-like unit of a muscle cell, from the mouse psoas muscle. In our lab, we then transfer the isolated myofibrils to a grid and prepare them for imaging. The first step in our workflow is now to vitrify the myofibrils on grids by plunge freezing them into liquid ethane below minus 170 degrees Celsius. Freezing occurs so fast that water molecules do not have time to crystallize but enter a glass-like state. Compared to conventional chemical fixation, vitrification preserves hydrogen-bound network of proteins and keeps the sample in its native state. The next step is to cut the sample into very thin electron transparent lamellae so that they can be imaged in a transmission electron microscope. This is done by a new technique called cryofocused ion beam milling or FIB milling. First, we need to transfer the grids into the Aquilos cryofib microscope. In order to reduce the ice contamination during transfer, in our lab, we have developed a special glove box where the humidity is kept at a minimum level. The Aquilos is a microscope equipped with both an electron column and an ion column. We use the electron beam to first image the entire grid and localize our target of interest. Then the ion beam is used to cut the frozen biological sample. During the milling process, we first create large windows around our target myofibril by ablating the material with a high current of ion beam, leaving a lamella in the center. Afterwards, the lamella is thinned down by an ion beam with smaller current to below 150 nanometer, thin enough for electrons to pass through. I'm Michael, and I'm a postdoctoral fellow in the Ranzer group. So once the lamella is transferred to the TEM, we're then able to image the specimen at very high magnifications. And what this allows us to do is to unravel the old structure of myofibrils worlds using electron cryotomography. The way that this works is kind of similar to a, to a CT scan. However, instead of tilting the source and the detectors, we actually rotate the stage in the electron beam. By collecting a series of images at a range of till angles, we can then compute the volume of the sample for visualization, which is called a tomogram, and curate the mapping molecules that are within. This enables us then to build up a 3D picture of the res organization of the components of a sarcomere and characterize them. We can do this then at multiple positions on a lamella or multiple lamella, and build up a 3D data set, which is then used for subvolume averaging, which is a technique used to align and reinforce regular features visible within our data so that we can gain more information on their molecular structure. The amazing thing about electron cryotomography is that we can visualize the molecular structures that we determine within the context of the tissue or cell. And so we can really understand in great detail 
how these structures are organized and how, in their natural context, they impact upon the biology in which we're interested in. The calculated reconstruction of the myofibrils reveals the three-dimensional organization of the sarcomere, including the subregions M, A and I bands, and the Z-disc. The Z-disc defines the border between two adjacent sarcomeres. It unexpectedly forms an irregular mesh and adopts different conformations. In the A-band, where contraction happens on a molecular level, for the first time, we could visualize how the two heads of the same myosin bind to one acting filament. Our study provides a first detailed view of the sarcomere in its native environment, and DAPA provides critical new insights into the mechanism of muscle contraction. We could reveal unexpected conformational plasticity of myosin heads, actin filaments, actomyosin cross bridges, and Z-disc crosslinks. Our future aim is now to understand how sarcomere organization is deteriorated in disease in order to lay the foundation for a future development of drugs. All of our efforts are part of a European consortium formed by our group, Matthias Gautel's group at King's College London, Frank Schnoller's group at the CNRS in Marseille in France, and Dirk Görlich's group at the Max Planck Institute for Biophysical Chemistry in Göttingen. We are funded by an EU Synergy grant, which helps us to push our research forward in the next six years. Mm -hmm.